Now that you've been introduced to uh, social exchange theory, let's take a few moments to go through eight of the underlying principles of social exchange theory to help you understand what social exchange theory really says about human interaction. Now I remind you again as we begin this that no theory explains everything. No theory is the one right theory. But I will remind you that uh, so each theory explains some things. And social exchange theory does provide a lot of insight into basic human behavior. Uh, humans are constantly searching for social profit. And you may remember this little uh, line that we threw up earlier. Profit equals benefit minus cost. And benefit was what do I get out of it. Cost is what do I put into it. Profit is my net gain. So humans are constantly looking in social situations at how much pro social profit can be made. And they're looking at what they get out of it and subtracting from that what they have to put into it to ensure that the profit is positive. Now I've added to this some quotes from real life. I, I like the quote earlier from uh, the Christmas Carol, I, I, I will go to his funeral but I must be fed. But here's some real quotes from real life. What would I, why would I ever want to do that? What will I get out of it? What's in it for me? Sometimes as adults or as educators, uh, we tend to get a little upset when uh, younger people ask us these questions. But the fact is, this is just basic exchange theory. They're trying to measure the benefit, look at the cost, and see if they're going to make a profit from it. Now, people in a relationship certainly that maximize benefits and minimize cost, and social exchange theory is founded on the following principles. The first principle, people who are engaged in interaction are rationally seeking to maximize social profit. Now, the key word here is rational. Rationally seeking. Rationally seeking to maximize. Rationally seeking to maximize profit. Uh, this, again, is, is, is very different from the approach of the behaviorist that see the environment as controlling behavior. What Holman sees is the human mind working like a, I mean, a little computer, analyzing, 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 a little business machine. What does it cost me? What am I going to make out of, out of it? What are the benefits? And what is my profit? And that means that the individual is rationally seeking to make decisions. Now, another uh, important part in exchange theory, and, and you will recognize this from Bandura's work as well, most gratification among humans is located in others. Humans are social creatures. Now, uh, if, if you go back and you look at uh, uh, social learning theory advanced by Bandura, uh, you find that he viewed humans as herding creatures. Well, social exchange theory kind of follows in the same line, limelight. Humans are social. And most of the gratification that human gets is located in influencing or, or interacting with others. None of us live in a cave. We all interact with people, and we want those interactions to be good. And that's where our gratification comes from. Uh, people have access to information about interaction that allows them to seek profitable situations. We understand because we, we grow up in this world and we're constantly part of the human herd, <laughs> interacting with humans all of our life. We come to understand the dynamics uh, and, and the information and the resources that are out there, the social, psychological, and so forth uh, stimuli that, that bring about the situations that we want. And just like we're constantly reasoning and we get our gratification from others, we, we also are analyzing that information, which we have access to, about interaction to see what uh, causes profitable situations to occur. Uh, people are rational, again, and calculate the best possible means to compete in rewarding circumstances. Now, earlier we said they're rational. Now we're saying that they're not only irrational, but they're looking for the best possible means to get them where they want to be, to bring about the rewarding circumstances that are sought. Uh, people are clever. Even little children are clever. They want to bring about just exactly what they want to bring out so that they may lay hold on the rewards that they want. And they're rational and they're constantly calculating 
the best possible means to get them where they want to be. And of course, people are goal-oriented in a freely competitive system. Uh, we're in a system in life where we compete with other humans. We're part of the herd. Uh, a herd of antelope might have to run, run the other antelope to stay ahead of the leopard. Uh, we just we compete with others, and and because we compete, we become very goal oriented, very much focused on what we want out of life. Exchange operates within cultural norms. Now, this is a very important principle of exchange theory. Some believe that there are absolutes out there that, that really are the values that people seek. Exchange theory says that those rewards, those goals, those things that are deemed appropriate uh, vary by cultures. Now, not only do they vary by cultures, they vary within cultures across people in the culture, and not only that, they vary in the person in the culture as the person moves through the course of life. Exchange theory establishes that the norms are just norms. Uh, this, these values are norm-based, and the individual adopts them, and they're very individualized, and they may differ in different parts of the world. Uh, I laugh sometimes in our culture, you know, because everybody wants to be thin. Oh, man, being thin. Being thin is in. Being thin is where it's at. Let's lose weight. We don't want to be overweight. Oh, me, we don't want to be overweight because beauty is about being thin. And yet, in, in ancient Rome, uh, just the opposite was believed. Isn't that strange? I was born in the wrong time. I could have been perceived as beautiful had I been born in the right culture. Exchange operates within cultural norms. Now, social credit is preferable to social indebtedness. In other words, when we enter into relationships and we measure what we have to pay what the cost is against the benefit, we want to come out on top. We don't want to be shorted. We want to make profit, not lose profit. We want to gain rather than fall back. And of course, the eighth one is the more deprived the individual feels in terms of an act, the more the person will assign value to the act. In other words, if we feel like that uh, we were going to earn a certain profit and it doesn't come through, we remember that. And we assign great value to that. In other words, we keep our eye on it from then on. I'm reminded of my mother one time says, well, I, I, I can forgive you, but I won't ever forget it. Now, I'm 56 years old, headed on 57, headed down the side of the mountain. It's closer down to the end of the road than it is back to the beginning for me. But let me tell you, she meant every word of that. She never has forgotten it. So, you know, when we, when we feel that we've been shorted, when we didn't get what we were supposed to get, we certainly uh, recognize that it sticks with us and we assign value to that. That value is necessarily good. We just know that that happened and we didn't like what occurred. Now, here's a, here's a picture I want to close with in, in a statement. We'll open our next lecture with this, but social exchange theory formulates the idea that human behavior is max aimed at maximizing social gains. Humans are, in fact, engaged in the pursuit of social profit. I want you to look at this picture just a minute. We have a, we have a male and a female. I did that just to let you know that we males can't say, well, that's the females are selfish. And we females can't say, well, you males are selfish. The truth is, by under a social exchange theory, we're both selfish, looking to see what we can get out of any situation. But we are rational creatures, engaged in making decisions based upon the, the difference in perceived benefit versus perceived cost. If we believe that the benefit outweighs the cost, we see it as a good decision. If we believe the cost outweighs the benefit, we see it as a bad decision. I want to thank you very much for your patronage. I appreciate you taking time to view these videos. I hope you found them beneficial and helpful. Again, I remind you that no theory explains everything. The theories explain some things. Some theories do better than others. But social exchange theory does, in my, in my mind, uh, uh, explain a lot of what goes on with human behavior. Again, I close with this quote down here at the bottom when I told my granddaughter that 
I couldn't go to Cherry Berry because I was a diabetic and I didn't need the sugar. And she said, it's not for you, Papa. It's for me. Uh, I don't think we have to teach uh, children to be self-centered. We sometimes have to teach even old adults not to be self-centered. We, But a social exchange theory says that we're weighing the benefits against the cost to maximize our social profit. Uh, may the odds be ever in your favor. Have a blessed day.